It is time to get this week started, people. The truck is loaded with the supplies I will need for the week. Got plenty of stuff to stock the refrigerator with. Got a few yogurts to get my probiotics, some butter. Got some uh, good turkey and provolone, some sausages to go with my chicken, some raspberries to go with my blueberries and my oatmeal, and some shepherd's pie from home. fresh bag of coffee beans and plenty of food in the pantry okay i have just started my pre-trip got fresh clocks all the way around all right it is time to get started but my first stop of the day is the greer yard i've got to pick up a trailer i'm taking to tennessee and i have to get a new bag mine got i don't know damaged in some way in, in a race it doesn't open the gate anymore so i need a replacement I am at the Bush Bean Factory and already got my paperwork. Just gotta drop this trailer and grab an empty. It's a nice, simple drop and hook. That's the way to start a Monday, people. I have made it to Lowe's. And a few moments ago, I had an impulse to give a FedEx driver an ass whooping. But you know, sometimes you learn things and then other times you remember things you forgot. That dock where FedEx is at was open and I was maneuvering around to get in it when he pulled up and he tooted his horn at me and then pulled up and backed into the spot. But my, you know, my intention was to back there, hook up to the empty beside it and then roll on. But it don't work like that at, at Lowe's. What I've got to do is drop this trailer here, hook up to my empty, pull it over here, and then unhook from it, come back and hook to this one, back it up into the dock, and then hook back up to my empty. All right, now my empty is over there, and my loaded trailer is going there with the closed dock. So, dang, this dock is kind of close to the wall. All right, look at the wall there. But it gives me just enough room to lower my van in here. Now, I can hook back up to my empty. And I'm going right back where I came from to get another Lowe's load. 728, nine four Here at this DC, the guard checks everything out when you come in and you get this gate pass that you have to fill a little information out. And then you're at the bank. This is my clock situation. I've got an hour and a half almost before I have to do a 30 minute break. But I've got over six hours of drive time remaining. This Lowe's that I'm headed to in Bessemer, Alabama. Well, I gotta do a 30 minute break before I get there. So I guess I'll have about two hours of clock left when I deliver this. Don't have a pre plan for that yet. But I'm gonna make some jambalaya with chicken and a cheesy O'Dooley sausage. I've got it all planned out how I'm gonna do it, but um, I'll share the recipe. In there. again people I have made it to Bessemer Alabama and there are three docks here so maybe with any luck I won't have to 
drop my loaded, hook up to the empty, move it out of the way, and then come hook up to my loaded again, back it up to the dock, and then grab my empty. But if that's what I got to do, people, that's what I'll do. Uh-oh. I hope they're not serious. It's like after five, but my work assignment said I had until six. No such luck. I'm dropping my loaded to move the empty out of the way and putting the loaded where the empty was. Compared to what my flatbed buddies are doing, it's not too bad. Trailer swap is complete. Now it's time to prepare some supper. And what I'm going to use well, it's called a 12 volt portable stove, but I like to call it the lunchbox cooker because it looks like an old timey lunchbox. This little door here houses the cord. And when you plug it in, the little red light comes on. First thing I'll do is put in some aluminum foil so it's easy cleanup when I'm done. Put in my little aluminum tray, which you can get like three or four of these for less than a buck at Walmart. A couple boneless mostly skinless chicken thighs some seasoning and butter and i'm going to close it up and let that start heating but what i'm making tonight people is jambalaya what is jambalaya without sausage so now i'll just toss the sausage in with a little bit of water get the steam going and now to let it cook while that's cooking i've got another load assignment that's come in which i'm not going to be able to make it to it tonight but i can pick it up early in my shift tomorrow but while the truck is moving i'm going to set my lunchbox cooker down here on the ground all right let's check you have one hour and zero minutes of remaining drive time all right now what i do is take the chicken out and put the rice the in. The sausage and the butter are still in there and I add water. And stir it up a bit. And I'll cut my chicken into much smaller pieces. Okay. Now I think the chicken's done, but it's got like a little pink to it, but it's gonna be cooking for about another hour. I will put that back in. Mix that up. So that's cooking. And I'll probably add water two more times before it's ready because the water cooks down as it cooks. All right, it is the end of the day. I am parked at exit five off I-20, just have crossed the Georgia line. And there's probably like 10 parking spots here. Even though trucker path, said they were all full so you can't always go by that but it is time to see if supper is ready watch how this steams when i open it up Woohoo! oh yeah the rice is tender it's time to eat but this recipe makes i'd say two or three very hearty servings so i'll have lunch tomorrow i forgot something i'm gonna put some provolone cheese on here so we'll give that say another 10 minutes or so but while we're waiting on the cheese to melt this is what my clock situation looks like so let's take a look and see if our cheese is melted oh yeah it's melted all i added was just a little pepper a little garlic and sea salt and a little bit of texas pea all right the moment of truth let's see how it is Mmm, that's good stuff, people. And I think, uh, I don't know, I may have $7 in this altogether, including the chicken, the rice, and the sausage. The sausage was the most expensive thing, but I should get at least three meals out of this. Prepared right here in the truck. Takes a couple of hours for, you know, everything to cook. It's not a microwave, it's sort of a slow cooking thing, but... Pretty versatile, but cleanup is a cinch. I just take my aluminum foil out of here and the tray and my plate, and it goes in the trash. And I'm letting tomorrow's lunch cool off. 
and I'll put that in the refrigerator soon. Good morning. It's time to take a shower. four-star hotel. I've got a mint and a Jolly Rancher on my towel. All right. <clears throat> Shower is done. So now it's time to make some coffee and some oatmeal, do a pre-trip, and get on the road. All right, the clock is reset. Now I can do my pre-trip and get on the road. Into the stink of the city. I have made it to Maducano, Georgia. Getting ready to do a little drop and hook. There's the one I'm taking. There's where I'm putting my empty. Nice and easy. For the third day in a row, I'm here at the Lowe's DC. Just outside of Memphis, Tennessee, I'll be doing all that trailer swapping stuff at another Lowe's in the morning. And I haven't spent one penny this week, but that's getting ready to change because I'm in Longhorn State. I have looked at getting a steak, but I decided not to. I'm just going to get a great bacon cheddar cheeseburger with Wisconsin aged cheddar. My dinner tonight is going to start with a delicious side salad. That was one excellent salad and the ranch dressing was so good. Next is a burger. Drop and hook, drop and hook, drop and hook. Okay, all that trailer swapping is done. But check out what my empty has. Skid plate. So if I get sent to a beverage can place, I'm gonna say, I got skid plate. Is that gonna be okay? I said, Lord, take me downtown. I'm just looking for some touch. It is Friday, people, and I'm at the Atlanta Yard. And my clock has just reset, but I'm still here. And the reason is, I T-called a trailer here last night, and my paperwork was here. But, you know, I wasn't going anywhere anyway, because my clock was almost out. But the trailer I'm taking somewhere is on the way. It's probably 30 minutes away. So that gives me time to make a little coffee and I am past due on some video editing so I can get this video uploaded for you guys. Smith and Waters from Wershaw almost went to work there. I'll go ahead and open my doors before. Got some cotton. This cotton will one day become your blue jeans. Okay, this will be easy. Well, that was my week. Not anything record breaking, but I guess that's solid for five days, about 2,500 miles. And I used most of my clock today. I have four hours left on my 70 hour clock. But I probably used on average of three hours a day on duty time. So I see the potential I can probably run hard for six days in my 70 hours. 
which I may do that later in the year. We are now at the end of episode 23, but I'd like to thank each and every one of you for taking the time to watch it. I had intended originally to break the week into two episodes, but it didn't work out that way. It's only one this week, but maybe, just maybe, my next video I'll be editing on a MacBook Pro. I look very forward to that. But you'll have to tune in to see. Oh, while I'm thinking about it, because I know I'm going to get at least two comments about why am I using all that on duty time. Well, let me just tell you why. I work for GNP Trucking, and I'm a regional truck driver. I'm not an OTR guy that has any intention of staying out two to three weeks at a time and running on recap. Actually, while I'm here, I've crunched the numbers and looked at it. It is not in my best interest to ever run on recaps here. So I work five days. I'm probably going to do some six days in there just to make, you know, $1,300-ish or $1,400 for the week in certain situations. But as far as the $1,000 guarantee that experienced drivers get, it's $800 guarantee for, you know, guys right out of, truck driving school or just with a, a little bit of experience, what GNP expects is to use 10 hours of on duty time. So all the time sitting at a shipper, it is their expectation for us to show that is on duty time. I know when I was a OTR and worked on recaps and stayed out weeks at a time, heck, I didn't even log a fuel stop or any time at the shippers. I had a pre-trip and a post-trip, that was it. So I get it. But it's just a different situation. And if any of you would like to be able to say the same thing, call Matt. He's uh, the recruiter I'm working with now at GNP. Uh, the biggest question is if you're in the hiring area. Um, some people in Texas, South Carolina, Georgia, Tennessee, you can go to our website, which is gptrucks.com, or you can just give Matt a call and he can go over all the details with you. But guys... I think ZZ Top's getting ready to start calling me with my big bushy beard. So I'm going to go see Tom and get a haircut and a beard trim and enjoy my weekend. I hope all of you do as well. And be safe out there. And keep on trucking.